People say you need FU money, like millions of dollars. All you really need is FU cash flow, and it doesn't have to be high. I've felt financially free since. Running a cold email campaign is one of the easiest ways, one of the most straightforward ways I've found to get new clients. We've used it to match with most of the Fortune 500 for our agency clients and a lot of billion dollar brands we've been able to sell. We've generated millions of dollars of revenue just from cold email. The problem is if you've tried cold email, it's not as straightforward and as easy as it looks. But luckily we have put together the cold email optimization checklist and you can have it for free. What this is, is the internal tool we use to optimize our cold email campaigns. This checklist will teach you or your team when to rewrite the subject line, when to rewrite the body of the email, what to put in the body of the email, how to check the email to make sure there's no errors, before the send goes out. All of that in a very straightforward checklist and you can have it for free. To get it, go over to experiment27.com slash checklist and you can have that download. Again, the URL is experiment27.com slash checklist. What investments should you make in your 20s? I've seen a lot of advice online about the typical types of investments people make, you know, stocks, bonds, buying real estate, getting, a house, all that sort of normal stuff. But I made a couple decisions in my 20s that have really set me up to live my best life. And I wanna break that down in this video to possibly save you from making some missteps, but also to help you properly allocate your capital. Because if you make the wrong decisions in your 20s, and I don't know this for a fact, but I've seen other people that have made a bunch of wrong decisions in their 20s, they end up trapped in life. They end up having to take a job they don't want because they need money. They end up having to put in vacation notices to their bosses in order to take cruises or go across the country or whatever. Like they're trapped because they made poor decisions in their 20s. And today I wanna to stop you from doing the same thing. And stick around till the end because I will share with you a secret that I like called what investments not to make in your 20s. And I'll give you a list of that. And also click down below, there's a checklist with all of this in it. I recommend investing in creating as many case studies as possible. Now, what does that mean? What is a case study, right? I'm in the agency sales business. I've generated over $10 million in sales, $100 million in leads. I run multiple companies. And what a case study is in the agency business is a piece of work that you've done in the past that you can then use to get you future work. For instance, I used to do social media for Tyson Chicken. And so I could use that in a cold email to pitch other Fortune 500 brands to get them to let me manage their social media. And I actually have a past video on how we did this for nonprofits, pretty old video. A case study is something that allows you to move up to the next level. And you can do it for everything, it's not just business. And that's what I wanna talk about here. You need experiences that improve your sellability, sellability in business, it's just like how interesting you are as a person and sellability in business. You need experiences that improve your life, that make you a better, more fulfilled, happier person. What does that mean, you might be wondering. For me, it was buying courses when I was still in college and I was studying marketing at Florida Gulf Coast. It was buying courses from entrepreneurs that I respected. So people like Noah Kagan and Ramit Sethi who were teaching the things I wanted to teach. Noah's course I got taught me how to start a business. And actually through Noah's Facebook group, me and Robert Indresh met. Robert, as you may or may not know, is the CEO of X27, which is our marketing agency. And we're lifelong partners in terms of business. But that happened because I spent money on a course. And that is the, the correct way that I should have spent $1,000 back then. The Ramit Sethi course was dream job. That was the one that I got. And that was 2000, I think. And that allowed me to move to New York and get a job with no connections. So that course has paid for itself. I can't even count the number of times. And that's what's cool about investing in a course in your 20s. Just something that's gonna change your life, something like those, or even Email 10K, which is our course about how to start a business and grow it and get billion dollar customers. Investing in something like that will change your framework for how you approach life. And it's so huge. This is what the course is about. Everyone goes through these normal life scripts of like, you need to apply for a job, you need to make a resume, you need to do all this stuff. And Ramit threw it all out and he's like, just talk to the people that hire, be cool, and eventually you get a job. And I thought that was crazy and then I tried it and it worked. So investing in courses is number one. 
Other investments I made in my super early 20s, like 21, 22, was I went to China for a month and that was an incredible experience. I was in a country that I didn't speak any of the language. I got scammed multiple times in China. I had to learn how to navigate an environment. And that really set me up for the jazz riff that we call life. Because life is similar to throwing yourself into a foreign country where you don't speak the language. Like stuff's just gonna be flying at you at all times and you're just gonna have to figure it out. So I learned a crazy amount doing that. So travel's number two. The other thing that I invested in was saving money so I could move to New York City. And moving to New York City changed my life incredibly. Not only did I get a job within two weeks, I've talked about this a few times, working at a Groupon type of startup, which taught me how to cold call over six months. It also set me up with a bunch of lifelong friendships and relationships, and it hooked me up with the agency that I ended up becoming director of marketing of, which then I was able to leverage into building X27, which then grew into the Quadrant and this YouTube channel and all of that. So. Moving to New York, I would say was one of the best investments I made. All of these actually in my 20s, if I was gonna go back and do any of these again, I would do all of them. Traveling to China, moving to New York City, buying at least these two online courses. And these are all risks to take early. If you're later in life, if you're in your 30s, 40s, sorry. No, <laughs> if you're in your 30s and 40s, you can do the same thing. But in your 20s, this stuff really pays off. Anytime you can just shatter your perception of the way things work, it's a good thing. These are all risks to take early. The earlier you take these risks, the better. If you're married, you got a wife and kids, and you buy a course called Find Your Dream Job, your wife might not let you take the job. Like, you might be tied down, I don't know. I don't know what your relationship status is like, but while you're young, while you're single, before you have kids, do some crazy stuff, take some risks that are gonna pay off, dividends later. And again, these are investments that I can't even tell you the ROI, right? Like. You put money in an index fund, might go up four to 8% a year, which is a good solid investment. You put that money in a course <laughs> that shatters your worldview and that might make you a million dollars. You know, the stuff I learned in dream job got me the job at the Silicon Valley startup and my net worth was 10 million from that. So I feel like that course paid for itself. <laughs> and the Noah, K the Noah Kagan dream job sort of combo was what got me. So that is the main thing I would invest in in my 20s. In terms of financial investments, because once that starts picking up, I'm 28 now, and so all of those early dividends are now paying off. It takes about you know, eight to 10 years to start really seeing the fruits of your labor in any pursuit. For me, it was entrepreneurship. So now here we are eight years in, almost 10 years in, and I'm seeing a lot of profits. Robert's happy, everyone's crushing it in our company. So 22 to 25, you're investing in courses, you're traveling, you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff to build up your case studies so that you can become a more interesting person. Later in your 20s, once that all pays off, the best investment that I made was stuffing money into an index fund after the economic collapse. I put a bunch of money in in 2010, just a couple thousand dollars here, a couple thousand dollars there, and the market went up and it was Great. There may or may not be another financial collapse, but if you see the stocks tanking, throw some money in an index fund and just kind of let it ride out. That's number one, index fund. The second best monetary investment I made was buying a building that makes profit every single month. I own a building that is a fourplex and we just get rent checks every month. People say you need FU money, like millions of dollars. All you really need is FU cash flow, and it doesn't have to be high. I've felt financially free since I started making about $1,000 a month passive income. Like it doesn't have to be too crazy because at that point, you know that you can work at a Starbucks and be fine. Or really, if you own a building, you can go live in one of the units. The other three will take care of you. Sure, you're scrounging by on like 700 bucks a month, but guess what? Still alive and you don't got to take shit from nobody. So that's that. Buying a building is the second one because an index fund you can invest in with no money or very little money. A building, the one I bought, I think was $88,000. So that's at minimum what that is gonna cost. Third best monetary investment I made in my 20s, besides the courses and all that stuff, and what we just talked about, is starting a business. Hands down, starting a business. The business has generated the cash that fuels the other investments. So going out there, selling something, building a team, firing that team, building a new team, you know, accordioning your life and trying to create a solid business system that funds the lifestyle you want, whether that lifestyle is you hanging out with your wife and kids or you being in the office 40 hours a week, 80 hours a week, whatever, whatever lifestyle you want, creating a business that funds that is so huge. And even more than the building, even more than the index fund, 
and really even more than the courses, starting a business has been the greatest thing that, that I've ever done. And I'm sure Robert would say he's similar. Having a business is the most freeing thing possible because you can just do whatever you want. And that's that. All right, you stuck around to the end. So here's your reward. What not to invest in in your 20s? Let's go, CDs. These are certificates of deposit. This is where rich people will store like 250 grand and it'll get like two or 3% over the course of five years, you lock in some interest rates, et cetera. Not a good investment for the young because it's too slow. Savings accounts, letting money sit around at one to 2% interest and trying to make money that way. Also not a good way to use your money. If you're young, invest in the stuff we just talked about. If you're old, maybe put it in a CD, you know? <laughs> CDs are more for locking in wealth than growing wealth. And the last one is don't spend your money on bullshit. That's it, set a budget every month. For me, I actually don't really even like spending over 4,500 a month. And some months I like to spend only 3,000 a month. Luckily, that still allows me to travel and do literally everything I want. And then you stack a crazy amount of cash after. A lot of people are buying designer handbags. A lot of people are going on expensive vacations and staying at the Waldorf Astoria or driving a rental BMW, like doing all this crazy stuff. When if you just drive a less expensive rental car, stay in a less nice hotel, you'll be better off. And the thing is you can still stay in a super fancy hotel. Just the thing that I watch is the cash flow, right? If I'm living off 4,500 a month and I'm banking 45,000 a month, I'd say I'll go buy a Louis Vuitton bag. Like I can go do something like that. What I'd like to do is set myself rewards. So if I do X task, then I'll go out, like I'll go stay at a nice hotel or something, but it's all tied to task completion. That way I make sure I'm still working. So that's that, that's what to invest in in your 20s. You wanna create as many case studies as possible, and that means buying courses that'll increase your skill set, traveling, moving to a city you've always wanted to move to that has a lot of opportunity. Those are the three. And then in terms of financial investments, index funds, if you can, some cash flow producing real estate and starting a business. By the way, if you want the system that we're covering in this video as a free checklist, grab the link in the description. You can have a PDF of everything we talked about. Thanks for watching videos like this a week all about business and how to live your best life, startups, investing, marketing, all of that sort of stuff. So subscribe for more videos like this, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what did you do in your 20s that you either regret doing or set you up for success. Either one of those two I'd love to see down in the comments and let's talk about it. I'm Alex Berman, thanks for watching.